So a few days ago, my buddy Adam shoots me a message on Facebook and says, Hey, the neighbors are moving and they're getting rid of some old TVs. You might want to come look. So I go over there and there are two TVs they were throwing out. One was a probably late 90s, early 2000s TV VCR combo. I wasn't interested in it. The other one was this little beauty. This is a 1987 Sharp Linetron TV, a color unit. It has a UHF and VHF uh, inputs on the back. And uh, it works. It was filthy. I've done some cleanup on it, but it does work. We'll try it out here in a second, but first, a little tour. Now, the left panel of the TV is blank. On the front panel, we have the channel up and down, the volume up and down, of course, the good old power button, as well as an earphone port, or headphone port, as most people would call it, which is pretty common on TVs from the late 80s, early 90s. Virtually every one I recall seeing back in my, you know, my youth, it had one, so I don't know why it was so common, but... Useful depending on what kind of setup you want to do. Here on the right panel of the TV we have the actual speaker. So this is a mono TV. We have the color adjustments listed as picture, tint, color, and brightness. As well as the HRC, IRC switch. Which from what I can gather was used to differentiate between signal boosting standards that the cable companies had back in the early days of cable TV transmission. Because... Different methods introduce different interference and they needed to compensate for such. So this switch lets you select which one. I guess later TVs automatically switched or alternately they came up with a more common standard. I'm not too sure, but at least I know what that little switch right there is for. On the rear of the TV, we have your pretty standard VHF and UHF connections, the power cable, the TV slash cable TV switch, and the auto fine tune switch. And lastly, on the back, we have the stamp, which contains the serial number, the manufacture date, and power usage, model number, and all that other information you might ever want to know about your TV. Now, no video about an old TV would be complete without an actual test of it. We'll go on and turn it on. I've already got it tuned to the channel for the Sega Genesis. We'll power up the old Sega Genesis. And once the game gets going, you should get a pretty good idea on just what the picture is like. Once you get the color adjustments correct, the TV actually looks pretty good. So the picture tube seems to be in good shape. It works uh, pretty well. I've had it lose color a couple of times, which is a little weird. It just goes into a very sharp black and white image. Uh, leaving it unplugged for a while usually fixes this issue. And uh, otherwise, it runs pretty well. My only real complaint is that it has a small nick in the glass right around here and I don't really like using uh, TVs that have damage to the glass, the picture tube, but uh, that really isn't as much of an issue to me as you think it'd be. Uh, don't know what I'll use this TV for, but it's cool to have. I enjoy anything vintage and having a nice 80s TV to go along with all the gaming systems from the late 70s, 80s, 90s that I have that would hook up to an old beauty like this. It's, uh, it'd be pretty cool to sort of recreate that full, you know, 1990 gaming experience. So, um, thanks for watching. Catch everyone later.